the amount of medication I was on would have killed someone. How it never did me, I, I don't know. By the grace of God, this plant has given me back my life. It's time to consider cannabis. I'm your host, Curtis. A lot has been going on in the last couple of days. Michigan became the first state in the Midwest to legalize the recreational use of cannabis for adults. Some city of Cincinnati leaders, including Vice Mayor Christopher Smitherson, are working towards decriminalization of cannabis. Any decriminalization would go through a charter amendment, which would need approval from voters. But if you've noticed, voter decriminalization of cannabis is kind of the trend in Ohio. The United States Surgeon General, Jerome Adams, wants to discuss cannabis's Schedule I designation under the U.S. Controlled Substances Act, citing the need for more research. And while all these things are reason enough to be excited, what has really got me going is the fact that the Ohio Patient Registry is now open. Now, not everyone is as excited as I am. If you go online, you'll see a lot of people who are still unhappy about the way the state has rolled out the program. They're concerned about product not being available for dispensaries, and they're concerned that dispensaries closest to them won't be open until who knows when. And these are legitimate concerns. While I myself remain optimistic that, albeit slow, this program is going to roll out. And in a couple of months from now, it will be fully effective and people will be able to go into a dispensary, buy their medicine, take it home, all without fear of arrest or prosecution. Now I'm one of those people who are still waiting on an email from the state saying that I can go confirm my information and pay my registration fee. And being patient for that email is not easy. So if you're in that same boat with me, let's just take a moment, sit back, relax, and let's consider cannabis together. So Rhonda, tell me, uh, what came first for you? Was it an illness or was it an experience with cannabis? It was an illness. I had a freak accident 18 years ago in December of 1999. I broke my neck at C2 and from C2 to C7 is completely fused with an anterior and posterior plates. I've had to undergo 23 neurosurgeries five spinal cord stimulators when all the opioids failed me and they could not control the pain, the seizures, they put in a Dilaudid pump. I had my Dilaudid pump two years and I just got to the point where nothing was working. My life was a mess. I had no life. I couldn't get up out of bed. I was 40 pounds lighter than what I am now. I had no quality of life. And I came across cannabis by a game that I played, which was pot farm, because I knew absolutely nothing about cannabis. Never used it, never smoked it recreationally, just used the pharmaceuticals. And started playing this game pot farm, like on your phone? (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> on my computer. On your computer, all right. Yeah, I mean, it was a learning game for me because with all the surgeries and I was still undergoing surgeries, I couldn't get up out of bed. I couldn't do anything. I could barely follow the game. But lo and behold, an angel came my way. And I call her my earth angel because she's the one that taught me all about cannabis. I had never heard of hash bash, never went to any organizations, and I went to my first hash bash five years ago. And that's when I started to get the education of cannabis. And by the grace of God, the movement and help from my friends, I'm where I'm at today. So I haven't heard of a hash bash before. What's, that sounds fun. <laughs> what goes on there? It's usually every year, the first weekend in April, they do it up at the U of M. If I'm not mistaken, John Sinclair and a few other guys started this back in the 70s where they'd go down to the Diag and they would 
educate people on cannabis and light up on the diag. And every year, cannabis activists, they all come there, they all speak. Uh, Tommy Chong spoke there. But that's where I started to get my education in the cannabis. By the grace of God, the movement and help from my friends on where I'm at today, I've been totally pharmaceutical free. August 17th has two meanings for me. One, it's my youngest daughter, Michelle's birthday. Second of all, that's the day that I became pharmaceutical free. I had my Dilaudid pump removed, and I was very honest with my doctors, my pain doctor, my neurosurgeon, everybody, because I just got to the point that nothing was working, and all they could do was just keep me medicated to the point that I had no life. Everything I touched turned to garbage, and I didn't know myself. It was relearning myself again. And being okay with the disabilities that I have and being okay with the person that I am today. I was just wondering if you'd be willing to share about the freak accident. What what happened? It, let's see. It was in December. I can't tell you the date because I don't know the date because of the memory impairment from the head injury also. Um, it was a pharmaceutical day. We didn't see patients. And I was in like a suit and heels. And when I got home, I had taken off the padded rails on my my double pedestal waterbed. And I didn't realize I had snow on my heels. And when I hit the hardwood floor, it flipped me backwards and I caught my neck on the, the pedestal bed. Oh, wow. Which caused me to break my neck at C2, but it also flipped me forward to where I hit my my face on the floor, which caused the closed head injuries, which gave me migraines and seizures. Wow. So how long were you in treatment before they put in the Dilaudid pump? 12 years. Wow. So for 12 years, I was taking 44 pills a day, 980 milligrams of morphine a day, 40 milligrams of Valium a day, six milligrams of Xanax a day, plus all my medications for my seizures, the Depakote, the Tegretol, the Phenobarb. And I thought I was okay. I would be out driving. I had no business driving, but it was okay because that's acceptable. Wow. All I knew was the pharmaceuticals. And the sad part is they try to create lifetime patients I was on my way to being a lifetime patient. Thank God I'm not. I still go in and see my neurosurgeon. I still go in and see my pain doctor because they told me I had lost my mind. I was nuts that I would wind up killing myself going off the pharmaceuticals because I would not take Suboxone or Methadone. Hmm. So when they removed the pump, I went cold turkey. And if I would not have had access to RSO, cannabis, edibles, I wouldn't have made it. Yeah. And I was in hell probably 10 days. Thank God I don't remember most of it. So how long were you on the Dilaudid pump? Two years. Two years. And they're, you know, when I would go back to them and tell them, you know, this isn't working, they would either increase it or add more medications to the pump. Not one time in 14 years have I ever experienced withdrawals from changing meds because they would induce a medical coma and switch my medications over. I'm just walking, talking proof that cannabis can give you back your life. Four years ago, I couldn't have ridden on the back of the Harley without someone duct taping me or bungee cording me on so I did not off and fall off. So what was the transition like to cannabis? You said that you were playing a game mm -hmm. on your on your computer. Um, it was called Pot Farm? Yes. Okay, you're playing Pot Farm. And a friend of yours? I did not. This up. <laughs> like, how, how did, I'm just kind of curious, like, when did <laughs> the word cannabis get first spoken to you or... Did you bring it up to someone else? Like, I, I'm No, I just, my niece found this game on Facebook and she said, you know, Aunt Rhonda, try it. 
you know, you're just laying there vegetating, you know, keep your mind active. So I said, okay. I thought it was like Farmville. I didn't know. And I got on the site and started requesting friends. Of course, they were in the cannabis family. And that's how I, I got educated. And I have an amazing, amazing friend. Her name is Mimi. She is the one that showed me how to replace my seizure meds with cannabis, natural oils, doing everything holistically. And education is the key to all of this people because you really have to be educated. Yeah, it's really important. Education, education, education. And I believe in it so much that it's now become my passion. Because when I go back and see the doctors, they're like, oh, you're messing with snake oil. That stuff is never going to work. That's a voodooism. You know, did not want me to try it at all. And it, it took me a while to realize that it was working because with the Dilaudid pump, I could take a computer mouse and set it on my implant to give me extra Dilaudid. Hmm. So you not only have the pump, but you have the reserve. And when every three months I'd have to go back in and have all that medication drawn out and new medication put back in. And as he's drawing it out, he's like, Rhonda, are you getting medication from any other doctors? I'm like, no, I don't have to. Well, here it was because I was replacing using the bolus with cannabis. So I wasn't drawing on the extra medication that I had in my in my pump. And when I told him that, he's like, oh, that's snake oil. That's never going to work. But give it a try. Well, I kept going back to him saying, you know, please back down my Dilaudid pump. But it took me three months to figure it out that the cannabis was working because I wasn't relying on the bolus. And the longer I got away from the pharmaceuticals, it was easier for me to get in touch with my body, to know when I'm hurting, what I need to do to get over the pain. And I have a regimen. I will smoke flour. If that doesn't work, then I go to the oils and the wax and edibles. If all that fails me, Rick Simpson oil does not. So I've been pharmaceutical free August 17th, 2014. What was your perception of cannabis before you started pursuing it as treatment? <laughs> uh, very old very stereotypic. I thought people that used cannabis were trolls that lived under a bridge. They didn't have jobs. They were degenerates. All I knew was the pharmaceuticals. But I was so wrong because it was very acceptable for the doctor or for anybody else to take a, a pill, have their cocktail and go back and see a patient. That's acceptable. Why this plant is so unacceptable is beyond me other than one reason. It's all about the money and it's all about the money that they make off of pharmaceuticals. Now you're up in Northern Ohio, right? Correct. Do you have your recommendation? I have not done it yet because Ohio, we have so many scams going on. Get your card, get protected. Well, Ohio has no medical card. They just opened up the patient registry and I was doing court support for patients that were caught up in the legal system by using the bogus Omni medical card, mm. you know, and I am not jail material, but I would much rather do something and heal myself illegally because that's what I've been doing than take their pharmaceuticals. And when I try to talk to the doctors about this, you know, I tell them what's the difference between God and a doctor. Well, God doesn't think he's a doctor. You know, <laughs> that's how they make their money. For every time you get a prescription, they get kickbacks. They don't want to see you heal yourself because there's no money in keeping people well. Yeah. And that's truly sad because there's so many people out there like me, myself, that had the wrong idea of cannabis. And thank God I had a mentor who steered me in the right direction, who told me that education is the key, 
I look up everything. If I'm trying to replace a pharmaceutical, I'll go to the natural flowers, natural herbs, cannabis. I'll do whatever I can to keep myself holistic. But I've also gained 40 pounds. I've got my life back. I help run a food bank. One thing I do do is I educate people on cannabis. Because where my life is at today and because I'm so proactive of my own health, I educate people on cannabis, how to get off of the pharmaceuticals, how to replace. And it even inspired me, you know, to start my own business, to be able to help other patients that are looking for the same relief that I did. It's just sad that There are people out there that think that if you smoke cannabis, it's wrong, that it has no medicinal purposes. Well, I'm walking, talking proof that it is. What has been your family's reaction to that choice? (laughs) My oldest daughter, Natalia, and she she would tell you firsthand, my children have come in home from school and they were teenagers, found their mother overdosed. Not at her own hands, but because of the mixture of the medications. This is what my children saw for 14 years. You know, they didn't have their mother. They, you know, I couldn't be the mom that I should have been because I was so lost on the pharmaceuticals. And I don't judge anybody when they say that they're an addict because by the grace of God, that could have been me. I never ventured to the dark side, thank God. I didn't have to because I just had things handed to me. Um, When I testified in front of the Senate committee here in Ohio, I had a bag full of medicine. I had pharmacy reports about this thick for a year. And I never had to doctor shop. My injuries are legit. But they failed to tell you that you build up tolerances to the medications, the amount of medication I was on would have killed someone. How it never did me, I I don't know. But yes, my children, you know, did find me overdosed because I couldn't get up out of bed. I couldn't walk. You know, I could barely talk. And now, yeah, by the grace of God, this plant has given me back my life. You mentioned speaking in front of the Ohio State Senate. Mm -hmm. What was that experience like? Interesting. Very interesting because I heard other people's testimonials of what they're doing for their children seizure wise. And I, I seen it happen right in front of me. You know, I seen the miracles that this plant can do, you know, for children with epilepsy, seizures, pain. I'm not saying it's a cure all but it worked for me. What was the Senate hearing for? That's when we were going up for medical marijuana, when we were just getting it in place, I believe 2015, somewhere in there. I still have, you know, my disabilities. I still have memory impairment. I lost the majority of my long-term memory, not only due to the seizures, but due to the prolonged use of the opioids. So what does that mean for you, total long-term memory loss? Does that mean you just don't remember your childhood or you can no longer make new long-term memories? Like I don't remember any of my childhood. And through the transition of getting off the pharmaceuticals, I keep journals. I take lots of pictures. And that's what triggers the memories back. But I've noticed since I've been off of all the pharmaceuticals, the memory has improved you're not in a cloud. At least with the cannabis, I I'm, I don't have to smoke on a daily basis. I mean, I can go a few hours to a few days without having to smoke it. But there are days where, you know, I, I do have to smoke the majority of the day. But I can still function. I can still get on the back of the Harley. I can still do decisions. I can still do banking. Mm-hmm. I can still run my business on cannabis. But if I was on the opioids, I could not. What is your business? Bill and I started holistically for me, patients helping patients. And we sell the CBD at a discount price for patients because it's so 
people hike the price up so much that it's so expensive that people don't stick with it. Mm -hmm. And I really did my research when I was doing it for myself on different CBD, different companies, different ways to use it. And I found two good companies that put out a good product that I can give to another customer at a fair price. I don't make a lot of money. That's not why I'm doing it. What I'm trying to do is educate people on the benefits of cannabis because, oh my God, I'm walking, talking proof that it works. So I even wear a shirt that says, uh, marijuana is safer than big pharma. And when I go into the doctors, that's the shirt that I wear. And people who know me, when I first got involved in the movement, they thought I was a drunk. Hmm. They didn't know my story. They didn't know how many opioids and medications I was on. And to look at the pictures from five years ago, six years ago, to where I'm at today, you can just see how it's brought back my life. You can see it through my eyes. You can see it through my expressions. You can see it through the weight I've gained, the things that I do, and giving back and trying to educate and help people. Like I said, it it has totally given me back my life. But the 14 years of being on the pharmaceuticals, I didn't know who I was. So I had to relearn who I was. Hmm. It's hard to imagine. So are you looking for more customers? No. I mean, the ones I have, they're awesome. I mean, I have people who have beaten cancer. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's just to get the word out that this does work and there's alternatives. You don't have to be a lifetime patient. Education is the key. Spreading the word is the key because And there are still a lot of people out there that think that people that use cannabis, you know, that they're, they don't have jobs. They, you know, they don't keep a home Mm -hmm. and it's sad. It's truly sad. Yeah. But I still go back to the doctors. Hey, look at me. I'm still walking and talking. You still think it's snake juice. And I've been told, do not talk to my patients about cannabis, Rhonda. This is how I make my money. Wow. And, and that's truly sad. It is. They've said that to you. Yeah. That's crazy. I've been out in public where I've had to use an urgent care for bronchitis, and I've had that shirt on. I've had pharmaceutical reps ask me to put my jacket back on. I, <laughs> Me, I tell them, uh, you can sit somewhere else because I'm not moving. I'm not putting anything back on. You don't like it, there's a door. That is funny. And I'll get into a debate with them over cannabis over their, you know, their pharmaceuticals. And I told him, I said, I can show you every battle scar I have to tell you that I know what I'm talking about. I know that cannabis gave me back my life and people really need to open their minds and look at their doctors and look at themselves because there's so much, there's such a better way to heal yourself than using the pharmaceuticals. That's really what needs to be done. People like you who, you know, haven't been using cannabis since they were in their Mm -mm. teens to say, hey, by the way, there's actually (laughs) something to this. You know, I mean, I don't want to, I don't want to sound like if you've been using it in your teenage years, then your voice or your testimony isn't as valid, but it's, it's quite a testament to the healing powers of the plant to have somebody like you. Well, you know, up until five years ago, and I went to my first hash bash, I didn't get out of bed for days. I could barely get out of bed to walk from my bedroom to the kitchen to eat. I mean, there was days I would sleep for 10, 12 hours a day. And you just, you just get into a fog. And that's how, you know, that's where they like to keep you. But I'm very honest, you know, about my battles and how I got to be where I'm at today. And I always go back and tell people, by the grace of God, the movement and help from my friends, I'm where I'm at today. And like I tell the doctors, you ought to be ashamed of yourself because you guys are are the drug pushers with white coats on, and that's legal. 
how do they respond to that? They, they just shake their, he calls me the cannabis queen. He just shakes his head at me, hmm. you know, and when I changed my uh, family doctor, because <laughs> the one that I had got busted for Medicare fraud, you know, I was very honest with her. You know, I said, I smoke cannabis. I don't have to smoke it every day, but I do smoke it. And she goes, well, when was the last time you smoked it? And I said, oh, about an hour and a half before I got here. You know, I don't, I don't hide it. Yeah. I mean, I think that's really important. I would much, much rather light up a, a joint than to reach over to a counter and get any pharmaceutical. I'm not totally anti-pharmaceutical because there's just some things that cannabis cannot do. So I'm not totally against it, but I will always search out the holistic way and I try to find the answers or what will help me because I could never pay repay Mimi back for the gift that she gave me, which was my life. How I pay her back is by educating other people. My God, if I can do it, a lot of people can. I mean, it, it really affected my home life, being on all the pharmaceuticals, my children, everything. Anything I touched turned to garbage because I wasn't thinking clearly. You know, no child should ever have to see their mom laying in bed because she can't get up because of the pharmaceuticals, can't go to their school dances or to a play. Now, there was times I did go and I probably shouldn't know because I probably embarrassed my children. But now my, my oldest daughter and I have a marvelous relationship because I'm able to be there for her mind, spiritually, everything. Our relationship has come a long way. That's good. And she, you know, she likes the person that I've turned in to be. Now, five years ago, you couldn't say that, but you can today. Yeah. Yeah, I'm trying to think about back when I was on the Oxycontin. I can't remember a lot of uh, oh my goodness. More impactful conversations that I was able to have with my kids or my mm -mm. wife. Mm -mm. No, you, you can't because you, you get to such a low spot in your life, such a dark place in your life that you don't see any hope. You don't see any way out. Hmm. So then what does it do? It sinks you deeper. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people can't see that light at the end of the tunnel. And that is truly sad because there is so much more life out there. Mm -hmm. There really is. You know, so much more. So this doctor who calls you the cannabis queen, is this your neck doctor or a pain doctor? The pain doctor. Well, even my neurosurgeon, Dr. Zachary, I was on the back of the Harley and we hit some potholes, which... I probably shouldn't have been on the back of the Harley, but I had to go see him. And he seen me sitting there. He goes, oh, well, how's your endocannabinoid system? Uh, I said, well, it was doing real good till about four days ago. I said, I just want to make sure everything's okay. And not one time did he ask me, Rhonda, do you want a pain pill? Do you need anything? Because he knew what my answer would be. Mm -hmm. And he is now getting himself educated on the endocannabinoid system oh, yeah. and the benefits. Yeah, the endocannabinoid system is a very interesting discovery. I don't know enough about it personally, but I'm in the process of learning more, trying to ask the right questions to the right people. Right. I mean, I go to any educational class that I can find, any, any forum that I can find, because like I said, education is the key and getting out the proper information and the correct information is the key. Absolutely. Is there anything else that you'd like to uh, share with our listeners or make sure that they walk away from listening to this with? Just make sure that you do your education, your research. Don't take my word on it. Don't take anybody's word on it. Do your education yourself. Find the answers yourself. Reach out. Talk to people, people that you can trust, because there really is a better way other than the pharmaceuticals. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for your time and your story. Well, thank you. People like Rhonda, who never had an experience with cannabis in their youth, who never got infatuated by Mary Jane or her intoxicating effects, 
but later in life discovered the healing powers of cannabis. Have some of my favorite testimonies to listen to, probably because they're not like my story and anything that's different is more entertaining for me. But whatever your story is, come on the show. People need to hear it. Consider Cannabis is not intended to be a substitute for professional medical advice, diagnosis, or treatment recommendations. Always seek the advice of your physician or other qualified health provider with any questions you may have regarding a medical condition. If you would like to be a guest and share how Cannabis has helped your health and wellness, contact me at ConsiderCannabisNow.com or on the Consider Cannabis Facebook page. Consider Cannabis is looking to record interviews with people who can attest to their experience with cannabis versus pharmaceuticals as treatment for the following conditions. AIDS, ALS, Alzheimer's disease, cancer, CTE, epilepsy, glaucoma, hepatitis C, inflammatory bowel disease, Parkinson's disease, HIV, post-traumatic stress disorder, sickle cell anemia, spinal cord disease or injury, Tourette's syndrome, and ulcerative colitis. If this is you, please reach out. Other people need to hear your testimony. If you have found anything of value in this episode, please share it with someone else. Remember to subscribe for free and get every episode delivered right to your phone. Join me next time and we'll consider cannabis together.